I guess we're live. Uh, make sure we got sound. Yes, we do. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm just sitting tying, I'm not doing anything particularly special. Um, this seems to be my regular theme, um, but I'm just filling my inventory boxes, uh, kind of you know filling those empty spaces. The the jigs that I sold a lot of this spring, um, I'm just time to refill the boxes for uh, the fall sales that I have uh, that are typically uh, towards the end of the season and um, soon we'll start tying ice fishing jigs so let's get set up here and uh, today I'm just tying uh, it just walleye jigs. Uh, right now I've got some 5.8 Barumba in the vise. I have uh, an olive head and a color that um, it seemed like um, this summer in my area of course purple, black, and black and purple are 
the most popular colors. Um, but Perch and Fire Tiger, uh, another big seller for me this year. And I'm here in central New York. And along with that is pretty much any color combination that had some sort of chartreuse or uh, fluorescent yellow. So, big seller, something like this, blackhead with the uh, purple tail and uh, green chartreuse. Um, what else do we have here? Black and fluorescent yellow. Been tying a lot of those. And then today we're going to do just a very simple... olive with fluorescent yellow. So I'm using just uh, the regular size A pack bay rod wrapping thread. It's an unwaxed uh, round nylon, nothing special. I'm using up the last of this olive tail. It's awfully thin, this hair. So the pinch, I'm gonna be taking a pinch that's a little, feels a little bit thick, but you'll see pretty quickly how there is a brown, shorter layer of hair that comes out. And then when I switch my grip just to restack the pinch is a, is a good size so it feels thick to begin with but so I'm going to measure here I'm measuring the tail to be the length of the body past the bend of the hook so on this vise is right to the end of the silver part of my jaws. Switch my grips, keep this left hand pinch tight. And I'm adding the darkest color first. And after locking it on, I give it a twist, turning the color to what becomes the back of the jig as you fish it. And then the fluorescent yellow is just a straight fluorescent yellow. You can use UV colors. That would do just fine. Just every stack by hand. Should do, should, I should probably move my hand this way. And then again, I'm just measuring to make sure that both colors are the same length. Locking this on, a few reps towards the bend of the hook and a few reps back. And I'm just looking to get this V shape in the hair before I finish the collar. Walking the thread back up to the head and then lately I've been just, my chair is cockeyed or it actually feels a little low to be honest. I've noticed you can see that this first wrap, there's, a, there's at least one full thread width that's sticking out. Fixing that is very easy. Just walk the thread back and then back up to the head. But I think it has something to do with my with my chair. I think the kids were in here messing with my chair. To finish this collar off, I usually take a length of thread of an opposite color than what I'm tying with. Make a loop to put underneath my last wrap. And then I can just walk the thread back about halfway and then back up to the head help create a cone shape before I 
take the tag end through the loop and pull it through. Very simple. This is a great color. The um, olive and fluorescent yellow. I also um, I actually had pretty good luck this year so far with olive and it's not it's not a pure white. It's it's a off white, almost like the head on a Coca Cola when you pour it. it it's kind of like a brown a brownish white. But I actually have been doing really good um, with that color combination. So I will try to keep an eye on the screen. I think I had two guys come in and then out. But here I'm just restacking, taking the longer, a couple longer hairs out just to avoid those short strikes. I'm also looking for some, I'm at the end of this tail so I'm just making sure there's no broken pieces. Try to remove them when I find them. Switch my grip, keep this left hand tight. few wraps towards the bend of the hook and a few wraps towards the head. Now you'll see on this pinch here there are some brown hairs in the fluorescent yellow. Most of those will come out because they're shorter as I pull the shorter fibers from the buttons here. If any of those stayed in the pinch I wouldn't much mind. Um, I think it just adds a little bit of a Variants, you know, just like nature, nothing is perfect. Measure that. Keep this pinch tight through the whole process. Still keeping that pinch tight. I really don't let up on that pinch until about this time right here, which often I will take my hand away and so the viewers can see. Um, but keeping that pinch tight when you do release it, if you have some nice firm wraps, it will keep that compressed and uh, really hold the helps hold the hair in place. Uh, help keeps the tail from pulling out. So today the jigs are very simple, nothing fancy. I do have some tinsel here. I was tying a lot with that uh, crinkle mirror flash. That really has been pretty popular, almost as popular as just the regular flash of boo uh, for, from the custom stuff that I've been doing. I forgot to check what time we started, probably about 1.40. 130-ish maybe. So this is the very last pinch off that tail. So I'm really keeping an eye out for broken pieces or the any of the hairs that just don't look right from the from the tip of the tail.
been actually out in the garage doing a little bit more on the kayak and working out that front hatch um, so I can remove the bucket but have a larger usable space for that front hatch. And I didn't think it was going to work out and I was actually thinking I probably wasn't going to finish the video. And But I went ahead and I cut out the wooden pattern, you know, the eighth inch MDF, and it snapped right into place. So it's not perfect because I'm eyeballing everything and freehanding the lines um, of the shape. You know, I, I cut out a cardboard pattern and then transferred that to the MDF. But um, it actually worked. So there was a, a third piece that I needed to make to make it better. So I cut that out this morning and there's a piece I had to glue to it, so I won't really get to it till tomorrow. But if those three pieces snap together to create a floor and a front and a back wall inside the front hatch of that uh, Slayer Max 12.5, then uh, I'm going to be really excited. Um, I'll end up getting starboard and making it like a, a, a regular thing. Um, a usable, a usable product. So, not not that I'm going to sell it. You know, I called it a product, but a usable thing. I'm going to, um, you know, I have been videotaping and taking photos as I as I go along. So I will be posting that. It's super informal, uh, just like the last video I did, putting the handle on the kayak. You know, it was over the co course of a few days. Um, I didn't worry about, you know, what I was wearing to make it look like it was just all shot in one day. I, you know, I didn't worry about anything like that. Some days I used one camera. Some days I had the, both cameras set up with my lavalier mic. But overall, I think the video came out good. Um, there's things, of course, I as I watch it, I critique it, of course. But um, trying not to stress out too much on the production of it and be more concerned of the actual thing that I'm doing. So, you know, first step went well for making the floor and the front and back walls for this hatch. The second part of it, doing it in wood, the MDF, has been successful so far. So, you know, as long as each step looks like that it, it, it proves that I can carry on to the next step, then if I get to the part where I make it out of the starboard, then we'll have a completed video and that'll be, that'll be posted shortly. I am working with a few guys um, on a collaboration, so there's an, a third collaboration that, that I've been um, happy to work on. And hopefully that will be out soon, over the next three, four weeks, tops. Still waiting on a couple videos everybody has to the end of June. And this... bobbin. This one's a really old bobbin. And for whatever reason, the spool tends to pop out. I don't lose the spool. It stays in my hand, so I don't... doesn't mess up my jig or anything, but... If this keeps popping out, though, I will switch bobbins. I'm sure I have another one sitting right here that I can just swap to.
what it is is this 950 yard spool nice jig the 950 yard spool this is more this is at least halfway empty so when this gets smaller the torque from the thread coming off the spool tends to pull it out of alignment so and it just pops out you know there's not I suppose I could bend these more but I've been you know I like I, I like the spool to be loose and then I squeeze the spool to make you know to put on the brakes or to loosen the brakes so that's just my thing So locking on the thread, I do walk the thread down, I don't know, a third of the way down the hook shank. That's not necessary. You could probably stop an eighth of, the, an, eighth of an inch down the shank of the hook. But out of habit, ever since I was young, I would I walk it down quite far. Originally, I think that was to keep the hair and the thread from spinning. I was overcompensating for bad technique. But I figured if it if it's not hurting anything, why change it? So again, keep this left hand pinch tight through the whole process. Still super tight. Tight, tight, tight. Tight, still tight, still tight. Couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, couple wraps towards the head, and then now I can let go because I'm just going to twist the color to what becomes the top of the top side of the jig. So I've noticed there haven't been very many tying videos, not, not just me, but even other guys that I watch pretty regular. And I can only guess it's because fishing season is underway and you only got so many hours in a day. So I know how that is. So every once in a while again, I'm just double checking to make sure those wraps, the first wrap around the olive, and then the second wrap for the fluorescent yellow are equal. jig I am meeting meaning to get the kayak out again these last three days I've been surprised at the uh, weather it's been beautiful you know not much warmer than low 70s and sunny the problem is is that we got 10 mile an hour winds and on the two lakes that I would normally take the larger kayak on 10 mile an hour winds is brutal <laughs> you know it's like it's like trying to take the kayak out in the ocean so did fish from shore a few times I don't usually take my camera for that in the river we've had 
it, it's been pretty shallow here, the Susquehanna, and then we got rain for a few days. So it shut right up and it was chocolate milk brown. But I went across, drove over to Endicott this morning and the Susquehanna is low again, nice and clear. And again, just fixing that overlap issue. My collars have, are nice and small, you know, relatively short, compact, like I prefer. But every once in a while, you might notice if I scooch my chair a little bit, Just to just align myself back up with the vise. There you go. Nice jig. Want to remind everybody to uh, hit that like button and subscribe. As we get closer to uh, 500 subscribers, uh, we will do a drawing once we hit that 500 mark. Uh, we'll find out uh, the type of fishing you do or the type of jigs you like and uh, winners of the drawing will receive a set of jigs. If you have any questions or comments for those that view this after we are done going live, go ahead and just put those in the comments and I'll be sure to read and answer any questions you have. This fluorescent tail isn't terrible. The hair's a little uh, curly, so to speak, compared to the olive. A little bit short but usable, the length is usable. Restack. So the length of my tail is the length of the body. Pass the bend of the hook. Lock this on with three or four wraps towards the bend of the hook and then back up to the head. Finish this off with a loop of size A thread of a different color underneath my last wrap. Touching wraps down to about the center of the collar and then touching wraps back to the head. Oop, and there's a knot right here. Usually if you just take the tag in and pull it, it takes the knot out. I guess technically that's not a knot in the sense that it's overlapping threads. It's just twisted as I pull it through. There you go. Nice jig. We'll be uh, talking about scissors soon. Um, 
I don't know, I was feeling extra lazy. I dropped my scissors while I'm tying and instead of stopping and picking them up, I grabbed one of my older pair that I have sitting here in the jar. And it just reminded me that that, that is something that I do want to go over. Um, the scissors that I have now are fairly new. I think I've only been tying with them about five years. Um, they're made they're made in New York State um, for Klein tools, and they're what's the name of them? Simon, but I th I think the company has a different name actually, but they're they're for uh, beauty. Uh, Barbers and, and beauticians, whatever. People that cut hair for a living. That's uh, the company. Uh, you know, that's 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 what these scissors are intended for. And I uh, actually contacted the company, and they do uh, a double serration custom for me, which is nice. And uh, I was thinking about... Uh, fixing this part here there's the little rubber nubby and I thought I could just replace it uh, though they offered if I sent the scissors back they'd re they'd fix it f at no charge but that's not necessary you know I, I could I could use these scissors another decade and it wouldn't bother me that that little nubby part is worn out um, I'll probably buy a new pair of scissors um, instead of replacing this. But the one neat thing is I'll be able to... They're only a couple hours from me west. So I'm in Vestal, New York. And if I take Route 17, which I believe now on the maps is called Route 88, towards Buffalo... I can actually go and pick them up where they where they make the scissors, which would be kind of neat. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can maybe I can take a camera and do a little field trip and show people where the scissors are made. But how I got on the conversation? Let's see. Like I said, I had dropped my scissors. Oh, I'm gonna leave that there and get a new piece. I started. <laughs> So I grabbed so I grabbed my old pair of um, Detroit barber shears, and they, these have blades that are replaceable. And I've used these at least twenty years. Um, I had an older pair, the exact same thing, but one of these are are worn out. Where even though I've replaced the screws and the bushing that's in here like this you can see how that wobbles so this is my old old pair these are my newer pair that I used my kids were young and my oldest is 27 now so but as you can see these don't wiggle right so that bushing is still solid and these are great great shears love them I actually like the fact that they're much the point is much um, thinner. Oop. Pardon me. The point is much thinner than my new scissors. But these are blades that aren't replaceable, and the overall shear is more solid. That's why I ended up switching. Um, though these barber shears are freaking awesome. But uh, there's also other shears. I have a German pair that are, I believe, uh, they got to be from the 30s or 40s that I picked up at kind of like a garage sale flea market kind of thing. They're not serrated, but they work great. I love using them for fly tying when I'm cutting hair in smaller quantities. So when I'm tying a streamer, you know, I'm taking a pinch that's 
a fifth of the size of a bucktail jig. I love those shears. I also have another pair of, I keep calling them Simon. Simon. I know there's a different name for the company that makes these. I can't think of it. But I have, a, I have another, it's a gold pair and it's a different, um, what's it called, a different model that also has that custom serration for me. But I like using those for fly tying. This pair, this pair that I have here, I like specifically for tying jigs, just because they're a little bit, they're sturdy, you know, and I can, I can cut some, you know, a big chunk of hair. Because of the serration, the hairs won't roll, and it's a nice, it's a nice straight cut. But I don't have to be dainty with them if, if the hair is pretty thick or cutting something like zonker strips or something that would normally just be harder for a, a weaker blade. And, and that's why I switched these. So this one. So like I, like I illustrate how you can see how that wobbles. When I was cutting bigger pinches I would actually feel as I'm cutting through the blades the blades trying to crisscross and angle so it's not a big deal if you're tying one or two but if you know all afternoon you're just feeling the scissors give just a little bit and it just drove me nuts so that's I, that's when I started looking for professional hair cutting scissors that I could use for fly tying. So this pinch, that was a pretty thick pinch and I pulled out a whole bunch of hair from the base. There is a side of this tail that must have It just seems like it was worn down, probably from the cow itself while it was alive, or the deer itself. You see it a lot on calf tails. Same thing, there'll, there'll be a side of the calf tail that's all worn down and broken. Just from the tail swishing on the butt, I think, of the animal. So you can hear that spool rattle it's not holding this spool well i'm going to switch this out too talking about tools in feeling feeling that they're not working just perfect so you can hear it So I have a dozen of these spools sitting here. So I'm just swapping out. This is, I get them from Jan's Netcraft. The spools haven't changed in decades. They're same construction. Same packaging, everything, but they hold the 950 yard spools perfectly. I don't know if you're paying attention, but there was absolutely no rattle sound as I was pulling the thread. So the the arms on the 
the arms on this one are just a little cockeyed. One of them's one of them's bent in a little bit farther than the other. Not a big deal, you know. You can kind of bend them back and mess around with them, but. I'm just measuring this, the length of the body, past the bend of the hook. Once I get my length right, switch my grip and keep this tight through the whole process. Tight, tight, tight. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook and a couple wraps back towards the head. A lot of small broken hairs on this tail. And it seems only to be up this one side. This tail in just a second. You know, there's days that I don't get knots in my tag in there, and then there's days it happens every other jig. Not a good one. So this is the tail that I'm talking about. This side is what I'm going up now, and it just seems to have a lot of short hairs under it. And it look, basically what it is is it's twisted in. So as you can see, it's twisted itself in. And more than likely, when I was cutting the hairs from here, I was probably also getting some from this side. And that's what the broken pieces are from, the short, the short hairs that we just saw. So. future video I actually have some tails that have been in the garage since the fall and I'll pull them out and kind of do a short video showing how we have them salted and I'm not going to dye any the wife would kill me but I will bring the tails out and just show the process of washing them and just getting them ready so I can start tying with them so a natural white with a natural brown so a few wraps towards the bend of the hook a few wraps back towards the head Keep this pinch tight. That was four wraps towards the bend of the hook. And then walk the thread back to the head. Back to the center, back to the head, just to create a little bit of a cone shape. I do 
It does look like I have a one strand of the olive tail stuck in the wraps. I will kind of snip that away after I finish the collar. So what we got here, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. I have one I have one lame hair just sticking out right here, so I'm just gonna cut it away. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So this is the end of this dozen. Like I said in the beginning, you know, Fire Tiger, Perch, those have been uh, colors and combinations with fluorescent yellow and, and uh, chartreuse. Um, real bright jigs is what I've been tying an awful lot. So after I'm done with these, I have sitting right here on the table some 5 8 flatheads that um, I need to finish uh, a couple more dozen of Perch. But I do think we'll probably end the video since I have already recently done something with Perch and Fire Tiger. And I don't think people really want to watch me tie those again. So I am looking forward to, towards the end of the summer is when I really start uh, tying, filling the boxes again for ice fishing. Uh, so some of these live videos and some of my regular videos will just be uh, ice jigs. So we'll be doing those soon because I start tying those early fall, end of the summer or early fall, to get ready for wintertime fishing. So. There we go. What have we been tying for about about a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. One dozen olive and fluorescent yellow. Mark that off the list. I think that'll do it for this afternoon. Like I said, I'm going to go on and keep tying uh, the perch and the fire tiger patterns just to fill up the rack. Um, I'll turn the cameras on again uh, soon and uh, hopefully we'll do something a little bit different. Like I said, the ice fishing uh, jigs, I'll be starting to tying those soon. So if you like what we did here today, be sure add some comments down below. I did notice we had um, probably five or six different people viewing today. Um, not a lot of conversation, but um, it was nice to see that people were checking in. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, um, particularly uh, hit the notification bell. Once we get to 500 subscribers, we are going to have that drawing. So to be eligible for that, just make sure that uh, you've hit that subscribe button and the notification just so that you're notified anytime there's something new. I think that'll do it for today. Uh, one thing that'll be different, hopefully next time we go live, is I will get that new intro uh, as part of 
uh, the live stream. I think today we still had the old film strip. Um, but I did do a new intro. It's got the new logo, along with uh, pictures of when my dad was, he must have been 18, 19 years old, and uh, other picture of my mom. And uh, uh, catching, uh, I think it was Steelhead out in Oregon. So I think that'll do it for today. Until next time, keep tying in tight lines. <laughs>